Data architecture, using the query plan tool to understand query performance. Welcome to a session on data architecture. We're gonna be diving into the data architecture and querying data. We're gonna learn about the query optimizer, which is kind of like your super librarian in a library who's there to get you your books. And one way to know how fast a query is, whether it's optimized or not, is to use the query plan tool. So what we're gonna be showing you today is an introduction to the query plan tool, how to enable it, how to use it, and I'll show you a couple of examples of making some SQL queries and seeing the performance differences, measurable. Thank you. So here's a Salesforce org, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at an object that I have a fair amount. I have an airport object, OA airports, and I have about 70,000 records loaded in here. So these are 70,000 records of airports around the world. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at making some simple queries and we're gonna understand the performance. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna, first we're gonna go to the developer console and I want you to be able to go to help preferences. And there is a setting you can check here called enable the query plan. So this is an important setting that will then allow us to get this button, the query plan right here. So what we will be able to do is now we can get the query plan where the query optimizer will look at what we ask it to do. It'll determine whether our query is what's called selective. And we'll be introducing that concept in another video. And then it'll look at existing indexes, and we'll be talking about those indexes. And then it'll see if it's within what's called the selectivity threshold. We'll be explaining that in a subsequent video. But what we wanna do is the query optimizer, the super librarian, will make a decision which is the best way to get what we're asking for. And then it'll give us a numerical value of a representation of the cost. And we can see this value change depending on whether the query we ask is what's called selective, um, and we can see those values change so we can optimize our queries. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a new query. Let me close these up. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in a query right down here. We're gonna go select ID name from OA airport underscore C. And this is just gonna query all of them without a limit. So we're gonna do an execute. And that came up with 74,000 records. Now, what we can also do is we can run the query plan on this. And when the query optimizer looks at retrieving the data. It's going to make decisions whether it can use the index or not use the index. And then the worst case scenario is when the query optimizer has to go touch every record directly without using an index, and that's called a table scan. And you'll see because we queried all of the records, it was a cost of 2.8 to do the full table scan across all the records. And you just don't wor worry about this warning about not considering the is deleted. So this is a worst case scenario for this table, which was a 2.8 cost. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some where clauses. We're gonna go where the name, you know, let's assume we're gonna use a wild card like A and a wild card at the end. So now what we're doing is we're asking to retrieve all the airport records where the name has an A as the first letter. And we're gonna run, and if we just ran execute, we would see 2,531 rows, but we wouldn't know if that was efficient or not. So we run the query plan, and now we get to see that if, to run this particular query, if the query optimizer has to hit the full table with a table scan, to bring back the 2000 records, it's a 0.73 cost, which is lower than the 2.8 to get all 78,000. 
But if we look at, had, because it was able to take the name field, and we'll be explaining in other videos that the name field has a built-in index. And because we did it in what's called a selective manner, then this cost was a 0.33. So this was a 0.33 cost, which is approximately half the cost to getting it. So that shows us a fact, a fast query. Now, if I were to make this an inefficient query, which is put a leading character in front of it. So this is a wildcard character in the beginning, which is kind of like a contains, which is not a, what's called a selective query. So we're gonna now run this query plan. Now, had we run it without the query plan, we'd see a hesitation, we'd see the records, um, and we see that now we're getting 12,000, but it took longer. So now we're gonna do the query plan to understand why. And you'll see that the table scan was a 0.9 cost, but the name field was a 1.5 cost. So we now are significantly higher from our 0.33. Now these are dealing with a table, an, uh, an object that only has 75,000, which isn't a large number. So when you start getting into millions of records, this can the time difference can be quite significant. So what we've got is the ability to see our query plan and look for, obviously, the smaller the number, the better. And so we have name like A, or we get rid of this, and we even if we go A, B, let's execute the query plan. And I, we had four records. Let's see what we had here. So this is ones where the name is like A, B. Let's execute. Four records came across. And this is a cost of a 0. 0.0005. Now the table scan would have still been low, but the table scan was a 0.66. So we can see that this query was pretty fast. So because of the index, and because we only had four records, and it was a, what's called a selective index, it was blazingly fast. Now, had I put another wildcard character in front, this would not be a selective index. It'll return more records, and it should have a higher cost. So you'll see that my, uh, my cost now went to a 0.21, which is a higher number. So the absolute numbers aren't as important as seeing the differences between them. And we can see that we get much better performance when I do what's called a selective, query against a field that has an index, and that's what this one does. But the whole purpose of today's video is to show you the query plan and allow you to be able to run different queries and compare the different costs. And this is going to be an important diagnostic tool as you design your queries. So today I've introduced you to the Query Optimizer, the super librarian that runs behind the scenes, and we'll be diving into more detail. Today I've shown you the query plan tool where we can, and how to enable it in the, the debug, how to go set the preferences and the settings, enable it, and now you can see the cost. So this is gonna be an important tool we're gonna to use as we go study, dive deeper and deeper into the data architecture and queries. I hope this was helpful. Thank you for joining with Quick Queries. Join me again, same bat time, same bat channel. Subscribe to Steve TechArc www.stevetechark.com. Thank you.